Welcome to the Regulating AI podcast. We are live at TechX Big Data and AI Conference in London on February 6, 2025. I have with me Shar from PVML. Welcome to the Regulating AI podcast, Shar. Thank you very much and thank you to having me. Well, wonderful. Shar, uh, one of the uh, big things that is being discussed, we are in London, the EU AI Act, and also compliance of different, different rules and regulations around the world. You have a product that kind of helps companies with compliance. Can you just uh, give us a little broad, just a brief idea, how does your product help somebody, uh, let's say a company that's trying to get uh, to be in compliance with the EU AI Act? Definitely. So at PVML, we come with a new technology that's called differential privacy that can ensure mathematically that the output that received from data mm-hmm. are, doesn't reveal any information about individual and could not re, re, uh, re-identify in any way, no matter how computational power do you have. And with this technology, which is, we know, much more uh, comprehensive or much more restrictive and for, for more to GDPR required, allow you to do much more with the data. So we come with our infrastructure to connect all the data sources in one place, and then we help them to manage their access to data for, uh, uh, for AI, for BI tools, even for a data scientist or, or developer that want to access to data, while maintaining the compliance in the highest level. And GDPR and the AI Act, they, they explore many different uh, uh, techniques and they, de- they determine that the golden standard is differ- differential privacy. This is the only mechanism that can guarantee the privacy of the, of the individual from the data while enabling you to analyze the data and the population in general. And that's, that's the purpose. In general, you don't care. Company doesn't care about a, a, about specific individual. They want to want to get insights about the population, you know, improve their product, uh, integrate AI, uh, help them, help them to help them get, be more data driven. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the regulation holds them back a lot of, a lot of time. So we come with people and we decide our mission is make sure that company can progress and rely on data while maintaining those regulations that is very important as well. Mm-hmm. So, Shar, data is the lifeblood of AI, as you know. And because AI is gathering data from the internet, it is going to have its biases and things of that nature. Now, obviously, companies who are implementing that need to make sure that when they use the foundation models or those tools, the information that their employees or customers get does not have that kind of information. Are there ways to protect against some of those uh, biases and things of that nature for clients? I mean, our our audience is also policymakers and one of the things they are concerned about is biases, hallucinations, et cetera. is it possible, some people say it is not possible to cleanse the AI of biases or hallucination because that's just who hum, that's human nature is. What are your thoughts on that? So familiar with rock techniques that can extract concepts from different knowledge mm-hmm. and could it actually helps a lot with this hallucination. Yeah, if you ask a question about your data, and the, and, and the AI doesn't familiar data, he, he will may have some, some result. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you provide some context and said, oh, this is the relevant for, for the user question, then it could help a lot to prevent hallucination. Of course, that with 100%, you can be sure that this is a reliable uh, uh, information. But in most cases, with 90, 99%, you can be sure that you get accurate results if you enrich those models, which is basically static. You know, this is pre-trained on specific data, as you mentioned in the inter- all the internet, but it doesn't familiar with your data. And it, the, in the, and it doesn't familiar with the latest model. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, I just tried to ask uh, the model about DeepSeek, uh, G- mm-hmm. GPT, for example, and mm-hmm. it, it didn't know anything about it. So when I 
give him some context, then he become much more sophisticated, then he, he produce much more better results. So mm-hmm. that's what exactly would we, we do it with ML. We help you get context from data privately, of course, mm-hmm. uh, and with mathematical guarantee, which is important. And then in which those prompt of, of a, another AI model that will be, become familiar with the data and then it produces a very valuable and, mm-hmm. and reliable uh, uh, answer, which you can also uh, uh, give explanation to users and say, oh, look, this answer based on those results mm-hmm. from this data so, so, uh, source and that make the, the, uh, the, the insight much more valuable. So, Sharp, what you are saying, again, for our listeners is that if there are enterprises, they need to train uh, the uh, LLMs on their corporate data because not just publicly uh, available data. Now, one question I have for you is, is it possible that the internal company data also has some biases in there? Definitely, data integrity is a, is a, is a different uh, is a different problem uh, that we try to tackle. Uh, but yes, uh, you have a lot of uh, redundant information. Uh, you you have a lot of uh, uh, bias information as well inside the data, uh, and 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 I think this is very important. That company will make sure that they will maintain only the data they they need, but also. Th- when they enter a new record, they make sure that it is reliable because you have a lot of junk, a lot of spam, a lot of uh, customers that just register, but they never use. So mm-hmm. you need to, to have a, a, a criteria that says, oh, this record is valuable. Mm-hmm. And if you have a way to do that, then they became much more valuable. But mm-hmm. another for your question, I don't think that it's, it's sustainable that company will start to train their model. So the real, the, the, you know, with their data, because what's happened when you have a new model and training and fine tuning a model is a very expensive process. Mm-hmm. So what we think is the right approach, that is a, the a retrieval augment generated approach is that you query the data live mm-hmm. and then you extract some context from this data. That's what we are doing. And with this context, you can enrich the model in the prompt itself with more data. And mm. then it becomes much more accurate uh-huh. and live as well. Because when you're training a model, you don't have a live access to the to the data. You are have a static snapshot of the model for specific time. And mm. it could also create a hallucination and bias because if I ask, what is the revenue today? And it doesn't know because it trained on uh, data from 2021. Yeah. Then you have... Uh, uh, not so good results. Well, that's a, a very important point. Shar, uh, another question, because right now, this is the big talk in data is the use of synthetic data. What is your view on synthetic data? Wow. Amazing question. Thank you for asking me that. So first of all, synthetic data have a very um, mathematical problem. What so, is the mathematical yeah, problem? Let's talk about it. So. Hmm. When you create a synthetic data, you cannot mathematically capture the relation between feature and the data. I, and, and mathematically, the 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 um, the concept is, that is is going like that. It's going exponentially with the number of feature that you have in the data. Mm-hmm. So it's two times the number of feature. And mm-hmm. if you have one hundred feature, it's more than all the atom in the universe. Mm-hmm. So, you know. When you you have a data with 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 a lot of features, then it's become irrelevant for analysis purposes. So the main use case, as I see it, for data synthetic is not for analysis purposes or getting data accurate. It's more for testing and experiments that the product works well. But when you want get live insights and and make sure that you have accurate results, then you need something more comprehensive. Mm. And also, we, you still have the problem that you train the data um, on synthetic, crea- you, when you create, sorry, synthetic version, so you train a model to create those uh, uh, those synthetic data. Uh, then it's also, uh, uh, this is synthetic version is, is, is available for this specific time that the model train on. So you don't have the live as well. So all those 
uh, problem make this solution less practical from the analysis and 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 inside site uh, uh, and more valuable for testing and and uh, make sure that the pro the, the developer that access the real data sure uh, that's very helpful can you uh, address the topic of open source models do you see some do you see any challenges on data with open source or you think that's not an issue or because the world i mean deep seek yeah. mistral llama there seems to be a movement now gemini is released some open source uh sam altman just i think yesterday made a statement that they are probably going to go towards some of that too because that's where it seems to be the momentum but from a data standpoint whether it's hallucinations whether it's biases etc does open source have any role in that yeah definitely i think that open source could solve some problem and i i'm fascinated that now you can have it on chat gpt and uh, more the like you know uh, with some performance deepsick did it and it's amazing i think it will advance the ai further and it will increase the adoption of mm. uh, of uh, uh, adoption of ai so yeah but what the challenges around in open source as i see it is okay i have this so now i need another infrastructure that will deploy it locally because mm -hmm. yeah the problem if if i don't have any issues with privacy and regulation so i can use the, those ai and maybe maybe it will be better for organization so before you choosing local model you need to this 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 uh, um think about the problem that you try to tackle because it's most of the time it will be more uh, efficient and, and cheaper to use those commodity tv ai mm -hmm. so not, when you have a very sensitive information and you want to use ai then maybe you can use a local mm -hmm. model that will uh, uh, share the information with and and it could help you with that mm -hmm. but still you i don't recommend a uh, organization to try to to start to fine tune this model mm -hmm. because this is very rapid growth industry and and and, and you get improvement every day so mm -hmm. still i recommend to use the rag retrieval augment generation approach that release context and and then when you have a new model you have all the infrastructure you have all this, the things that you need to uh, 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 in place and you can change only the model so that's that's also a challenge that we try to solve with our product that you develop when you develop your ai agent when you develop your ai, your AI workflow you will, you will do it in agnostic way mm. that is help you to switch in a button the model and mm. you don't couple with the ai provider or you don't couple with those specific model and mm. then you have more a, a very efficient way to change and, and 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 keep up with the technology yeah so what you're saying is use rag for your data sources uh etc final question char there is this conversation about these small language model or on device language models uh apple's approaches that it should be on the device etc what implications does that have for data or for you Okay, so first of all, we are don't aim to uh, 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 solve the problem of local devices. I think it's important, but you still limited by mm. those model. You need them if you want a real, you know, heavy analysis, heavy a uh, uh, duty machine that access the data and from different and from multiple data sources. You need a model with more parameter, and even mm. you need a model with reinforced learning. Yeah. That's what. deepsick r1 did mm -hmm. and 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 those model cannot run locally maybe mm -hmm. in the future and yeah. i think that contribution of open source that you can distillate this model to a very small and compact model but still you when you want a, a hard job i i think you need to use those model rather than the local but local could help you with si simple summarization you know sharp your emails yeah. and then and, and, and help you with the, your calendar and mm -hmm. etc but i think in organizational level you need those heavy machine for different uh, different tasks
Well, that's so very helpful. Uh, thanks for your insight into data, the implications of synthetic data, open source. Really appreciate you being on the podcast, Shar. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.